Uh, I'm supposed to be making a video right now, but first, we make dinner. What's up everybody, uh, I am Jay Moss and this is gonna actually gonna be the first episode of Mixing Mastering Monday with the Moss Man. That is me talking in third person, that is me starting a whole new episodic thing that I don't even know if it's gonna work or if I'm gonna keep doing it or if it's gonna be good. But, we're trying. So today I'm excited because today I get to show you guys behind the scenes on the mix of the new Somo song that just actually came out today. What's actually funny is I hit up the dudes like as we we're working on the song and like it wasn't out yet but I was like super psyched on the mix and like everybody was really happy and I hit up the guys and I was like hey you know I do this thing and I make these videos and I show people like what I'm up to. I show people like my mixes and kind of like how I went about them and stuff and I was like can I, can I feature your song? I'm really into it. <laughs> and they were like not until it's out. No. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, fair enough. Uh, we will wait until then. But today is that day. Today is the day that that song is out. So I'm not gonna blab on forever. I'm sorry you had to watch me make a hamburger. That was a delicious dinner, by the way. Um, I think it is time for us to just dig in and I'll show you guys what I did on that, but I'm pretty psyched on it. Okay, uh, hey, let's dig in. Um, as usual, we're gonna start with drums. A little different this time. Uh, drums, drums are programmed, um, but they sound sick. Um, and actually Phil, the uh, guitar player, brought me some really good samples and some stuff that he was into. He's getting into production on his own. And then we sort of like played with them and massaged them and did stuff. And this, this track here is sort of like the, uh, the output of what we ended up with. I'm sorry that we don't have the individual stems. However, I will be doing some extensive uh, videos on how to play with um, program drums really soon. Uh, particularly since I'm about to release like the bomb uh, drum sample library with room sound. So actually having said that, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I used a room sound kick to supplement what we did. So here's, here's the drums. Does that not sound kind of like almost like 80s in the best possible way? Like almost like it doesn't sound like a Casio keyboard per se, but it almost sounds like I don't know. I get like a Breakfast Club vibe in like I love it. Um, okay, cool. Here we go. We supplemented kick. Let me bring this into frame and hit play. This is the blasting room library from Room Sound, which is sick. So if you want something now, get this. But if you get this, you just have to promise to get mine. No, you don't have to. But uh, this is an amazing library. And so that's it. I just use a little kick from the Blasting Room library. Um, you can find full videos on that for sure. But yeah, I, I used a little supplemental kick here to reinforce the drums he already gave me. And, oh, and on this I used Vertigo, so probably the best in the box compressor that's ever existed. Um, it is really good and round and does analog-ish stuff, which is really hard to find in the digital, digital domain. So um, if you haven't, check it out. It's awesome. So these two things combined. They sound awesome. Listen to it with a full mix. That 
that is rad. So I wish I had more to tell you there. It was just great sounding samples that I thought could be glued a little bit more. I used Vertigo to do that. Um, and then after I did that, I kind of thought, oh, the kit could be a little beefier. So I, I grabbed a supernatural sample from the Blasting Room library and supplemented with that. Everything was phase coherent and it just helped kind of push the low end of the mix up to where I wanted it to be. Uh, guitars, we used my Bad Cat. Uh, it's probably my favorite amp, um, and they sound awesome. Um, so this was Bad Cat through, believe it or not, a Mesa Road King 4x12 um, on the closed back side into a Royer 121 into a Great River MEN1NV, which is essentially a Neve 1073 clone. That goes into a Distressor at 3 to 1, uh, with medium attack and release, probably only compressing about mm, a dB to 3 dB, just something to ever so gently contain. Given that all the tones we have on this record are sort of like a semi record on this single, um, they're all a semi clean. Uh, they are more dynamic than you would find with like a really distorted uh, guitar tone, so therefore they it's worth it to try to maybe contain them a little bit. And when I can, when I can do that in the analog domain, I do that. Um, awesome. If that doesn't sound like a single coil guitar, nothing does. Cool. Do we do anything to the general guitar bus? Unsurprisingly, so guitars hit soothe. Let's see what we did. I mean, this is classic problem area for guitars. About 2K to 4, 4.5K. Uh, I'll show you that without real quick. So that'll gently, how many dB is that? Just over six. That's actually, that's a, that's a healthy amount. Um, and then what are we doing here? Oh, no surprise here. So we're getting rid of stuff that we totally don't need. Sorry, here you go. Again, you might need dog ears to hear that. And then we have a boost in like the super low mids. This is gonna be warm. I've talked about it in like so many videos, but this area is what gives um, the guitars and bass. Bass is a little bit further north, like maybe like 400, but this area really gives guitars note definition. So um, make sure that this isn't lacking, especially if you're using chords that are not just like root fifth or like power chords or just like, if you're using chords that have a few different intervals in them, especially like bar chords or like augmented stuff or like weird jangly open stuff, um, your 200-ish hertz area is gonna be really important uh, because it contains a lot of the frequencies that we will associate with recognizing the note value of the guitars. So that is more than likely why I have a boost there. And I can turn both of these things off, play, and then I'll turn them on and play again. I mean, right out of the right out of the bag, that's not bad because uh, the amp is awesome. The signal chain is awesome. So this is just a minor bit of cleanup, right? This is like, all right, if there is anything drifting in above 10K, we just don't need it. And then uh, to me, I was like, you know what? I wouldn't call them scooped, but I would call them available for warming. <laughs> How's that? Uh, and here we go. I mean, this this boost is only 2.25 dB, so it's nothing. Let's keep going down the line. Uh, let's see. Oh, this looks like I did something cool. Yeah. Open. Uh, more soothe on that. I must have needed extra. This is probably like a clean guitar. Yeah, that tone in general is like kind of sharp, so we got the extra soothe. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about when I say the extra soothe, this little logo here means that I used a really nifty Cubase trick 
where I grab a region, I hit F7, pops up this window, and then I can add anything I wanted to in, in stereo. So like, for example, f for whatever reason, I wanted to have this like, have crystallizer on it. Uh, I always bring up crystallizer because I love crystallizer. Um, and this will write it directly into the file. I did a whole video on this, but. And that's it. Uh, we didn't use this, but actually sounds good. We could have. Um, so anytime we see that logo, you know that I did a region specific effect that makes automating stuff in your daily workflow life. Awesome, right? Because you can go to your group channels. You can say, okay, here's all my guitars. These are summing to guitars right here, right? And where's that? That's down here. This is where I'm going to apply sort of my broad brush stroke general stuff. And then um, that sounds great, whatever. But here we go. We had a dynamic shift in the song. We want to best represent the song. We want to be mixing for the song. So we need to do something specifically for this part. Now in the past, before I had such an elegant solution to do sort of like um, non-destructive regional based effects. Um, I'd either have to make another track and put effects on that that were running the whole time. I'd have to like put them on, bounce it, and then like bring it back into the session, mute that one, or I'd have to put effects on this one and then I'd have to write automation. You know, there was a bunch of different like solutions that we've been using for a long time. However, uh, this solution, it, Cubase 9.5 and this solution has enhanced the speed of my workflow extensively. And it's also, you know, it's not that I was, not that you ever want to be lazy or anything, but it's just like, it's just so fast and quick that you're like, listen, like, let's try out whatever we want here and no harm, no foul. It's quick. It's easy. I like that concept of making the technology transparent and whatever we can do to speed this up so that we're just focusing on the song. Um, this is us doing that. This is us saying our guitar tone is awesome, but here it's changed. So let's use Soothe on it and just smooth it out. All right, uh, looks like I did some stuff other places too. What do I have on these? Okay, more Soothe there. Okay, I double Soothed a bunch of stuff. Um, oh, bass. This is the first this is when I fell in love with the dark glass plugin. So this is the first session that I used dark glass on. It was right around this time that I actually um, started talking to the dark glass people and they said, Hey, let, let, we'll hook you up. Like, do you want to do a video? Just be honest. And that was like a cool part too, right? They didn't want me to like, they didn't want me to do anything other than just give me my thoughts. And fortunately for all of us, my thoughts on this is that it's a really strong bass distortion plugin. Um, I would not say it's a one-to-one -one replica of the pedal, but that's not a bad thing at all. It sounds great. So let's check that out. This is a base DI and dark glass and apparently some EQ and some Soothe. Um, so here we go. I think what we can do is just kind of bypass the dark glass. How sick is it to have literally like that tone in one plugin? It's just a bass DI. It's just a bass DI. So here's like just how the bass came in. You can tell that we used, I think we used Fatso on the way in. Like the dynamics are compressed, right? So we have a, a lower dynamic range. It's already going to hold the mix. But now that it's kind of like compressed, what do we want to do with the tone to make it exciting? Um, not just hold the mix, but make it like a feature. And we use dark glass. I mean, it's awesome. I've used the pedal a million times and it really does kind of have that pedals attitude. Um, you know, the settings, as I said, aren't going to be one to one identical. I don't expect that, but it sounds great. And this was the first time I used it. This is when I was like, oh, this is sick. Uh, moving on. Got some pads, got some synth.
did I do anything cool or not? I think that's just his pad. Yeah, sounds good. It's not that high in the mix. Don't really need to do much. Vocals. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay, so I compressed these on the way in. Um, we used a La Chapelle 583E pre. Look it up. It is um, a tube pre that also has an EQ section, especially if you're going to be using mics like an SM7 or something like that. This has a tremendous ability to sort of lift. And if you're going to do, you know, the SM7 is great and I use it all the time. And it's, it, it's a really versatile mic. And I think it's a somewhat blank canvas mic where I can... Um, for this, I'll say, okay, let me use, let me pick a pre. So let me use the La Chapelle here. It's a tube based pre. I have EQ built in. This is going to sort of elevate the high end and promote, this will sound poppier and better. Now, if I'm doing a hardcore record, right, I might take that same mic and I might put it through, uh, the Neve, like we talked about before. I might put it through, uh, what else would I put it through? It's kind of dark and cool. Oh, like the Thermionic Culture Rooster, if I want to get like real crazy with it, print a bunch of distortion on the way in. That will lift the high end in a completely different way. Um, so here, we lifted the high end with the La Chapelle Pre, um, and then we applied a light amount of auto-tune here. Uh, it's all about this knob. Let me bring this over. This knob here, the correction style, when you bring up this flex tune, this has been, this was introduced, I think in eight or 8.1. Um, this, okay. I want to show you guys something. Let's just grab a region. Cool. So let's go to very audio. Cubase is great because it has um, built in non-destructive uh, pitch correction. If you wanted to do that too, you could. So what we see here is that we have a lot of swoopy, like swoopiness in the transitions. That's really important. Um, when auto-tune starts to sound bad, and I can actually kind of visualize this for you here, right? So if I was to grab all these, I was just gonna say, hey, straighten the pitches. This is when you go into T-Pain land. Stay stuck in mud, stay hopeful. Oh, that's supposed to be a different note. Stay stuck in mud, stay hopeful. Right, but um, it sounds, it's, it's okay. It's just because I straightened it and straightened it to the wrong pitch. Um, what, so essentially what the knob on, yeah, you can see like, even though Cubase is registering this as a purple note or a B, um, you can see where the actual pitch is, is the line. And that line is for sure an A sharp. Um, regardless, so what that's what that knob essentially does is that knob will, ah, yes, let's go back. Here we go. That knob will, this, this one particular knob sort of changed my opinion on this plugin and it will let sort of the movement of the front and the back of the note to happen and it'll wait for that movement to stop and then it'll start to kind of like close in and hold the pitch. So it really has dramatically um, increased the transparency level of this plugin, which is awesome. And then, dude, Phil, man, he got glued to, because we did a bunch of compression on the way in, and then I did this little 1176 trick, um, the, the blackface, uh, which I would say, actually, I use a lot more Surprisingly so, I use it a lot more than the blue stripe in the waves iteration. And I don't know why, but I just always find myself leaning here. But what's weird is like if I use the slate uh, 76s, I use the blue stripe way more. So it's funny, every plugin sort of have its, its own voice. Um, he just loved it, man. He just, it brought things forward and he emailed me. He was just like, I want more. So I added more. Got 
Got some harm dogs down here. I'm actually <laughs> legitimately surprised I didn't label these harm dogs. Stay stuck in mud, stay hopeful, stay tied to a thread. Kind of the same deal. Mike always does a really good job with his harmonies. Um, Mike is the singer, uh, of course. Um, so that's never a problem. He's got such a cool character to his voice, too. He's like one of those singers that, to me, it makes the band, like, I hear his voice and I'm kind of like, right, like... That's what it's supposed to be. I don't know that many people that sound exactly like him. He's not trying to like emulate anyone. It's just kind of how he sings. And I'm a huge fan. I think it's awesome. I think it's really authentic. Um, I don't know. You know what? Like it's kind of a simple mix. We should go to Stereo Bus. I'm sure I did some crazy stuff there. Um, Stereo Bus, Greg Wells. Bum, bum, bum. If you haven't bought that plugin yet, everybody should get that one. Okay, looks like we have a like low, no, I want to call it low mid range, almost like, or it's high low mid range boost, and then like a mid range, mid range, like a 3K dip. Let's check that out. That is actually. It's only what 2 dB in each direction basically, but that's a massive difference. Like listen to how annoying it gets when I bypass. That rules. Um, okay, I got a tube tech chain here. I'm running through the tubes, hitting some distressors. We've been over that plenty of times. Ah, the 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 underdog plugin that no one knows about. This is how I use it like every time. Barely moving. It's subtle multiband control and it, it it rarely doesn't make things better. It, it's almost always better. And what you'll see is you'll see all these bands moving. Dude, if I like hit my brow, it's because it's so hot. Like and I'm sweating. If I turn the AC on, then it gets into the microphone and then it's loud. So I'm sweating for you. Um, but watch these bands. You'll see none of them are moving more than like a dB. But we can solo them. So that's the sub. And this is like low mid. Here's our mid mid. I believe that's the one that's moving the most. Constantly I'm combating, you know, that like upper mid range build up. Here's like, well, I guess this is like sort of upper mid range, but it's also sharing a lot of frequencies with what we consider high end. So you can call this like treble and you can kind of call this presence. And then here's presence. That's just like, S's and symbols and stuff. I'll turn that off. Cool. Um, another instance of the Soothe, which looks like I customized for this mix. It's awesome. It's doing like low DSing here around 8K. You can hear everything. It's stuck in mud. Watch. When he says stay, stay hopeful. Every time he says stay, you'll see this right around 8K. It's just going to. Gotta have that, that rules. Um, this is yet another, uh, I heard a weird frequency. How did I hear this? This is 20K. Hold on, let me turn this up. All I can say is I must've heard that in the morning with fresh ears. Uh, <laughs> All right, and that's kind of it. I, I did some Liberty and I, ha I have that off right now, but there's nothing special. Um, Somos, I don't know. I don't know what to say. This just kind of came together. Um, there's a lot of different cool things going on here, especially in the outro. We have a lot of different synths. Uh, here is one. When I say synth, I often just mean thing created in the digital domain. <laughs> Right, so obviously these two work in conjunction. Standard sort of pump effect. 
Yeah, that's cool. Sounds like someone's coming downstairs. What's up? No, nah, you just come be in it. Hi. Thank you so much. Check out this awesome outro they have. Comes out of the last chorus, and then it just turns into 2018 in like the hardest possible way. I just want space to breathe. Don't be in my asking too much. I just want space to breathe. Yep. This is a band that's unafraid. And I like that. He does. Woo, I'm getting the back rub on camera. What other mixing videos are you gonna watch? I get to back her. Hard to come by. Video's over. This is the end anyway.